Sing in this place on a Wednesday night. Ah, come on, can you feel the Holy Ghost in this place? Why don't you lift up your hands for just a moment? And why don't you just begin to talk to Him for a moment in this house? Lord, we love you and we praise you and magnify you, Jesus. We magnify you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I came across a came across a a statement that was made and this individual that made the statement they were quoting from a preacher T.F. Tinney the story goes like this that T.F. Tinney was preaching in a, in a revival great man of God and he noticed a gentleman came in as brother Tinney was beginning to preach after the service, the young man came up to Brother Tenney and said, that was a tremendous message from God. I got here at the most important part of the service. Story goes that Brother Tenney looked at him and said, important to who? He said, I want you to understand that the preaching of the word is important to you because that's God speaking to you. But the worship service is important to God because that's you to Him. I don't ever want it to be said at Center First that we're ready for the, the good part or we're ready for the preaching in a sense or an attitude of the, the praise and the worship is not valuable because the preaching of the Word of God is God's Word to you. And God doesn't get anything out of that. That's where you get something out of it. But when we come in here before the preaching and you lift up your hands and you begin to praise him, that's where God gets his part. And so I want us one more time to understand in this service that the praise and what we call praise and worship, that is us loving him and us giving honor to him. And in the whole entire service, hear me now, your miracle does nothing to him. Your blessing does nothing to him. The only part he gets anything from is when you lift up your hands and you praise him and you magnify him and you love on him. And that's why from the very keynote on the piano, from the very opening of the voice that begins to sing on this platform, you ought to be in the house of God. You ought not miss that part. Why? Because that's me to him. That's me to him. Can we do that right now? Can we just love on the Lord? Come on, let's give him his part. Let's give him his part. We're going to get our part in just a moment, but let's give God his part. Oh, we love you. Oh, God, we honor you. Oh, God, we praise you, for there is no one like you, for we can search this whole world and we'll never find anybody like you, Jesus. We lift you up, King of kings, Lord of lords, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, our high tower in the midst of the storm, our refuge. We praise you, my Redeemer. We praise you. And somebody give God some great praise with a great hand clap of praise in the house. If you have your Bible, if you'll turn with me to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And I want to hasten to the word of the Lord this, this evening. And I am glad that you are here tonight. This is a special service. And, and I am going to keep my remarks or my message as short as I can. And what I'm asking us to do at the end of this service, we're going to be presenting a special need to the congregation and um, a time of, of speaking to you on things that, that matter to God, they matter to your pastor, and they matter to our church and our community. And uh, so we're going to have a time in just a moment after I preach to, to share something with you. And then we're going to have a time where we come to the front. We've got some prayer cloths that we have here, and we are asking everyone in the church 
that you would help us pray over these prayer cloths and we will talk about that more in just a moment so don't be so quick to leave we're going to need your praying and your anointing and your faith turn to your neighbor and say i'm ready i'm ready second corinthians chapter 5 verse 16 through 21 wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, anybody glad that you're in Christ? Ooh, when the waves come and the ocean or the seas turn and life takes a dark turn, I'm so glad to be found in him somebody say amen. amen therefore if any man be in Christ he is a new creature I want somebody to hear this tonight old things are passed away now if that doesn't excite you right there I don't know what is because all of us have been through some things Turn to your neighbor and say, I ain't looking like what I've been through. <laughs> Come on, turn to somebody and say, I don't look like what I've been through. Because God's been good. Amen. You know, some of us look real good, but we know where we came from. God's been good to us. And so he says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. And not just new, but he wants us to understand that old things are passed away behold all things become new all things brother winslow all things even that area of my life that i don't want my neighbor who's sitting next to me and they found out they wouldn't sit there all things have become new somebody say thank god for that he said you are a new creature in christ that all things, the old things pass away and all things become new. Nobody can do that but God. Your best friend can't do that for you. Your pastor cannot do that for you. But if you are found in Christ, then you have a promise from God that all the old things are passed away. And he said, behold, all things become new. Verse 18. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now I want us to focus in on verse number 20. And this is where I'm going to spend the next 20 minutes. On this verse here. Now then, we are ambassadors. Turn to somebody and say, did you know that? He said... All things, the old stuff has passed away. Behold, all things become new. And you are a new creature. You are a new person. And he says all of this not so you can go home and amen and high five your wife and say, look at what we are. He did not say this so that you and I can get a sense of pride and get a sense that we are somewhat somebody but he follows this comment up with this heavy burden that is now placed upon you because God did not go through what he went through for you to walk around pointing at yourself and say I'm a new creature all things have passed away and all things have become new he said there is a purpose for what God has done for you in Shelby County. 
and here it is he said listen to me child of God listen to me those who God has paid a price listen to me daddy listen to me mama listen to me that saint of God who God has brought you out of darkness and into his marvelous light he said I want you to understand now that I have opened up what I have done for you and in you I want you to know what you are to be for me he said I want you to know that you are an ambassador for Christ listen now now then we are now then because of this we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us we pray you in Christ's stead in other words what he is literally saying instead means instead of Christ puts a different spin on it doesn't it what he is saying is Christ is not here so we step instead of him for you unto Christ that's an ambassador we pray you in Christ's stead be ye reconciled to God verse 21 for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him doesn't that make you happy tonight that the one who knew no sin who had no sin became sin for you and I why verse 20 says to become ambassadors I want you to put your Bible down and we're going to get into the word for just a moment tonight and then we're going to call everybody to the front and we're going to present some things to us tonight Lord we thank you for all that you're doing Lord being an ambassador is a that's heavy to be an ambassador of you I mean no one can take your place and if you called us to be in your stead if you've called us to be there instead of you in the sense of you walking this earth Jesus your feet your hands your voice if we are to be an ambassador and you've called us to this heavy purpose then God I pray that we can rise to the challenge and be that to a world that is lost and a world that is hungry and looking for somebody who's real and somebody who has something genuine and somebody that has something that is beyond man-made religion we are ambassadors and we step up to the challenge in the mighty name of Jesus would you be seated in the presence of the Lord thank you for standing amen ambassadors we, we are challenged to be ambassadors for Christ. An ambassador, I looked up some of the things on an ambassador, particularly the U.S. ambassadors. And as I began to read through what an ambassador is, there was one thing that really jumped out and kind of spoke to me about where we're heading tonight. And one of the things that the ambassador is, the U.S. ambassador, in fact, is... And it's found on their website, and I, I just, it just spoke to me. And it's simply this, taking direct responsibility for the security of the mission. That's what a U.S. ambassador is. It is somebody who takes responsibility for the security of the mission. The mission is what? Well, whatever the U.S. government puts in place, that's the mission. And that ambassador is somebody who speaks on behalf of those with authority. In other words, authority is transferred. And authority is given to those who are ambassadors. And these ambassadors, they, they go to other countries. You've seen it in the past when we had our embassy there in Israel. And all that unfolded with the embassy, a place that is set up, a U.S. embassy that is set up in another country. And we have ambassadors that go there. And what do they do? They, they, they stand in the place of the authority. 
They stand in the place of those who pass policy. They stand there taking a direct responsibility for making sure that the mission that is given by the United States of America, that it is secure, that it is accomplished, that it is held to the highest regard. And when this ambassador uh, is speaking in different countries, when they open their mouth and they begin to declare as the ambassador of the United States, they are speaking on direct authority from the president himself. When they speak something, it carries weight. When they say something, what they say goes. Why? Because they are there instead. They are in there in the place of the leadership of America. And so it is that the writer says, says to us, the people of God who have been called out of darkness and into God's marvelous light, those of us who knew where we were and knew the things that we have done and knew the kind of darkness that God has called us out. And many of us, if we could for a moment, we would testify. And maybe we can do that with just a showing of the hand that God has been good to us and has brought us out of some dark places. Can you say amen? If we could pass the microphone around, there would be some of us who would testify that there was a day that we were hooked on drugs and we, we, we couldn't break that, that cycle of sin and that stronghold of the devil. But yet God moved in and God did a work that no one else could do. And you are a living example of the power, the redeeming, saving power of God. There are many of you that are here today that could say, Brother Winslow, if it had not been for this church, if it had not been for sinner first. I don't know where I'd be today. I don't know what kind of life I'd be living, but I'm so thankful for the house of God and God has been good to us. Is there anybody that can say amen to that? And it is true that sometimes we can take for granted the, the awesomeness of God and the power of God and what God can do in a life that's yielded to him. So many times we are so far removed from the things that we have gone through and the things that we have done. And we almost forget that, that we, all, we always didn't have it so good and we didn't always have it so blessed, but God has been so good to us. Can somebody say amen? And so it is that the Bible talks about us being ambassadors, an ambassador to our community, an ambassador to our society, an ambassador to our family and our loved ones that need to know that God is a good God and God is a great God and God can do anything. I wonder if there's anybody here that can testify and say, I have shared with somebody this year of the goodness of God. Anybody done that this year? That you've shared to somebody the testimony testimony of how God brought you out and how God redeemed you and saved you. Let me just stop for a moment and say this. Don't ever lose your testimony. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Don't ever lose your testimony. Your testimony has power. And your testimony, it has, it has the ability to reach down into a life. And that's what an ambassador is. Everywhere we go, we are an ambassador of Christ. Every place we go, when we open our mouth, we are speaking in the place of God. We are speaking where God wants to speak. And God says, your life will become a light in a dark world. And I want to remind us, sinner first, that this world, again they're looking for somebody that has something real they're looking for people that have a hold of the word of God who can say listen I don't have it all figured out and I don't have all the answers but I do know one thing like it was said so so wonderfully uh, God God has a way of moving in and doing things when you seem like there's no way God says I'll show you a way and so we need to know that we are ambassadors of Christ and we are ambassadors to a world that needs us. Luke chapter 10, verse number 30, is a passage of scripture that we are all familiar with. Luke, the author, the physician Luke, he begins to unfold this, this story that all of us are familiar with. It's found in Luke chapter 10 and verse number 30. Because I want us to understand that you are an ambassador. You say, well, Brother Winslow, I'm not called to preach and I'll never get behind a pulpit, but your life is an example unto everybody that you meet. And here's the thing. The reason why there's power in being an ambassador is because you go to places that Brother Winslow never goes. 
You visit people that I'll never be able to visit. I go places you'll never go. But if we are all understanding that we have something that God has given us and we are to walk out of these doors of this church and when we enter into the places of our job and society that we are to be a guide. The Bible says that we are a church set on a hill whose light cannot be hidden. It says that we are the salt of the world. We are to be something to somebody that helps. Somebody say amen. And so it is in Luke chapter 10, verse 30. It says this, and Jesus answered saying, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among the thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Because let me just say it to you. Stepping out of our own life for a moment, it is inconvenient. To to get outside of our own box and to think of others and to look as upon others, it is an inconvenience. It is going to require us to put ourselves behind for a moment to love someone else. And the Bible says that this man was wounded, left for dead, and the word says a certain priest came that way. And when he saw him, when he saw his condition, when he saw his circumstance, when he he saw his calamity, the Bible says it was too much for him. It was an inconvenience to him. It was messing with his plan. It was messing with his his idea for his day and his ideology. So the Bible says that he passed by on the other side as meaning that if I don't see him and he's out of sight, out of mind. And so the Bible goes on to talk about a Levite. Verse 32, and likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. Now, I want you to see this, a priest, a Levite. These are people of God. These are people that understand the word of God. They understand what it means to to have a heart for others, and yet they are unmoved and untouched by what they see. And so it is that he came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. Let me pause for a moment, sinner first, and just say to this great church that we have got to make sure that when God places in our life somebody that needs us, we ought to have a heart for those who are in need. So I say amen. Now I'm not going to hoodwink you and preach this and then come up to you, you ought to know that Brother Winslow is leading somewhere tonight. Somebody say amen. But I want us to understand that God has called us to be ambassadors. And so the Bible says that when the priest went the other way and when the priest went to the other side and when the priest said, I, I, if I don't look upon him, then I don't have to do anything about him because, you know, uh, uh, if, a, if a tree falls in a forest and nobody sees it, does not make a sound kind of philosophy, right? If I don't see him, then, then, then I can go on about my business. And so the Lord says that the Levite did the same. But then verse 33 says, and we know this passage of scripture very well, don't we? The Bible says, but a certain Samaritan, a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, now listen to me, they all came to the place. They all had the opportunity. They all saw the need. They all saw the calamity. But they all differently responded to what was presented But the Bible says a certain Samaritan, when he saw him, the Bible says he had compassion. He had compassion on him. And went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast. On his own beast. 
Can you see the inconvenience? Can you see the, 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 the unfolding of the day and the plans and how they change? And the, the Samaritan, he, he, he not only had compassion, but he, he, he bound him up. He, he put the oil and Can you see the value of the compassion and what was done? And, 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 and he sets him on his own beast. Not, not, not somebody else's, but his own beast. He, he sets him on his own beast. And, and the Bible says, and brought him to an end and took care of him. I want you to see what he does and on the morrow when he departed he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him take care of him would you say that take care of him and whatsoever thou spendest more when I come again I will repay thee which now of these three thinkest thou was a neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves and he said he that showeth mercy on him. Then Jesus said unto him, go and do thou likewise. What the Lord was saying in this story is that we are ambassadors, that we are people that have been privileged by God and blessed by God. And many of us have, have story after story and testimony after testimony of the goodness of God. I can tell you over and over the times that God has blessed me and God has shown up and God has done miracle after miracle. How many can testify with a raised hand that God has done things for you in your life that you can say, I'm not worthy for the things that God has done. Don't get nervous. Some of you are like, I don't know if I want to raise my hand and what am I committing to? But we are ambassadors to Christ. I want you to stand to your feet tonight. Musicians, please come and just play us something softly in the background. So the apostle tells us that we are ambassadors. The apostle says that we are to be in that place where the Lord himself would be. And so with this here, and I'm gonna tell you, our church is an amazing church. You are an amazing people. And I don't know a church that is more giving than this church. It seems like every time that we, we have something that we do as a church, it just, this church goes above and beyond. And so it is that I, I want to present something to our church. Many of us understand what took place at Porta Cool. Anybody fully aware of what happened and the devastation that that brought upon families. And I'm going to tell you what, God has a way of doing things. God has a way of working. And so it is that I presented to, to our board and want to present to this church. And I am asking this church, we are, we are going to receive an offering tonight. And if you're here tonight, you came on the right Wednesday because you get to be a part of a blessing. And what we want to do in prayer and and looking at some things we want to bless the families that were affected by that fire and we want this community and specifically the families that were involved that um, that are affected by this we want them to know that sinner first loves them you know the bible says that you are to be witnesses and then it talks about going from jerusalem talks about judea talks about the uttermost parts of the world and if you'll look at that verse of scripture, it is a transition of proximity. Have you ever noticed that? And what it is saying is that you are to start in Jerusalem, meaning your own backyard, with a testimony. Our church, if you don't know this, our church is, um, and I know we're, we're live, but our church is one of the top five giving churches in Texas, if you didn't know that. We are one of the top five giving churches to missions for the United Pentecostal Church. We are one of the largest givers to global missions that goes across the world. We give to North American missions. We are one of the top in 
North American missions. That's for uh, the churches that are here in America. We give to ladies' ministries. We, we, we give to different missions. And we are one of the most giving churches in our district. And that's because of your love for people. This church has always been a giving church. And I'm going to tell you, look around, church. I want you to look around at this building. I want you to look around at how God's blessed us. I want you to look at the, the facility and the things that God has done for us. And again, I know we're live, but I'm going, to tell, I'm going to tell you, the reason why we have what we have is because this church is a giving church. That's why we have what we have. Oh, that was a good place for an amen. It's because of people like you that give. And so in prayer and in, in talking with our team, we, we want to bless these families. And here's what we're doing. We don't know what the end number is going to be. We don't know how much it'll be, but it's going to be a very substantial amount that we're going to give because we want to touch every single person that is affected by this. And so I know that this is a large amount and, and what the end number is, we don't know, but it is going to be substantial. And that is why we're presenting it to the church. And we're asking tonight that in this offering, we're going to ask you to give. Here's what I'm asking. Here's what I'm asking. Tonight, we're going to receive an offering. Tomorrow, this, the rest of this week, they're going to be having at the Civic Center, they're going to be having two different types of events that are happening. And one of those is going to be a, um, a uh, unemployment to help them and also going to be a job fair to help them find a job. And we want to bless them. We want to be there. So our church is going to be there. And what we want to provide is for each of these individuals that are affected, we're going to provide them a gift card. We're going to provide them a prayer cloth that I'm asking the church to step forward after the offering. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, man, I almost went old school. For a moment, I forgot our offering is in the back of the building. I almost said, ushers, gather together. Amen. Y'all so serious. Amen. And uh, we're going to gather together and we're going to anoint these prayer cloths. And we're going we're gonna to put a gift card in there. We're going to put a prayer cloth in there. And then I have a letter that I have written to each of them. And we're going to bless them. Because I believe that this is a time for our church to step up and say, we're not just sending missions off to Africa. We're not going to just send missions off to other countries and China. And, and we do that. And, and, and I'm telling you, we're, the, we're one of the top givers. I mean, thousands upon thousands of dollars this church gives to foreign missions, global missions. But we want to reach into our own community and bless our community. We don't know what that's going to look like, so we're just saying to the church that we're going to give and we're going we're gonna to take care of this and bless these families. Um, something else we're going to do as we get ready to come to the front, we are going to be designating a night. We don't know what night yet, but we're going to be designating a night that we're going to gather as a church for prayer. And it's specifically for those families. And what we're going to try to do is reach out to those families and invite them to come and join us for a night of prayer. And we want to pray for them. How many believe that prayer works? Amen. And so this is what we're presenting to you because we want to be a blessing to our community. Amen. If you would at this time, if you would join me in the altar um, at this time, if we can have everybody, if you'll just come to the front. Amen. Brother Wheeler, would you uh, help me facilitate um, our prayer cloths? And what we're going to do is if you will just take those out in just different stacks and just lay them at different intervals across the front. Uh, Brother Blake, would you help as well? Brother Buddy, would you help us as well? And just lay those out. Uh, put, take some on this side over here. Amen, if you wouldn't mind. And then we need some taken over here on this side so we can get plenty of room. Here's what we're asking. Before you walk out of this place tonight, um, we want you to stop by one of these stacks and I want you just to lay your hands on it. In the letter that I've written to the families, I have specifically told them that our church has prayed over these and anointed these. And I believe that out of this, God's going to do a great thing. Now listen, what, what, what's the heartbeat of this? We, we want to bless our community. We, we want to bless people that are affected. And, and, and I, don't, I don't know if you know anybody that's affected by this, but, but, but we know a lot of people that are, that are affected by what has taken place. Anybody know somebody? They're affected by it. 
And so we're going to pray over these in just a moment. I'm just asking, you don't have to spend a lot of time there, but just find a stack, lay your hands on them, just anoint them. And what we're asking is that, that, that God would, would give them peace and comfort in this very trying time that has affected our community. Um, um, I know most of you know this, but in just my recent understanding of the, of the, the, the magnitude of this, but I did not realize that Portacool is the third largest employer in Shelby County. I mean, did, did somebody not know that? I did not know that. But it is the third largest, I, I believe, the third largest that was shared with me in Shelby County. And can you imagine the lives that are affected by this? Now listen to me, folks. I, I understand you're saying, well, a substantial amount, what are we doing? I, I'm gonna tell you something. God, God is telling the church, we, we've got to step up and we've got to be ambassadors to those who are in need. And so that's what we're going to do. So here's what I'm asking us. Um, tonight, you can give in the offering and, 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 and go towards this. Um, and if you would memo that um, portico, we will know where it's designated for. Um, and and we're, we're going there, I think, tomorrow and possibly Friday to be a part of this, to bless these families. And, um, but we, we want you, if, if Sunday you want to give, give to the offering to go towards this. Um, if you get two weeks from now, you want to give, put in portico. Uh, to, so we know where to designate this. How many believe that God can bless the church when the church is a blessing? The Bible declared, listen now, the Bible declared that he said to Abraham, he said, I'm going to bless you, Abraham. And he said, and you're going to be a blessing to all people. He said, out of you is going to, you're going to bless people. You're going to be, you're going to, out of, out of your seed is going to come a blessing. I believe that God has blessed sinner first. I believe that. I see it every time I look at families that God's blessed. And I understand there's some across this that are saying, Brother Winslow, times are tough for me too. And I understand that. But watch what God does. Now, I'm not going to get up here and ask you to give 100 and give 200. We're not doing that. What I am asking you to do is, if not tonight, Sunday, and the next couple of weeks, if you allow God to direct you and allow God to speak to you of what you want to be a blessing, I'm going to tell you something. The things, I feel the Holy Ghost, the things that are going to come out of this. Because I want this community to know that we don't just preach stuff behind a pulpit. We don't just get up here and say, we'll pray for you. We don't just get up here and just say, woo. We want this, we want the world to know as much as we'll preach the gospel to you, we also gonna love you. How many feel like this is a good thing? Would you just kind of witness with your pastor and just say, pastor, I feel this is a good thing. Amen. And I'm gonna tell you what, I love people. Don't you love people? And I'm gonna tell you, I don't wanna go on and on because uh, I'm going to let God do what God wants. God's in this. But I'm going to tell you something. I couldn't imagine waking up tomorrow and wondering about the next several months. Now, you're going to give. I, this is not trying to, give you to get you to give. You're a giving church. I'm just trying to say, I, when it hit Brother Winslow, and I thought to myself, what would I do if I woke up and I was wondering with my kids and my family, what are we going to do? And to know that a church would step up and sacrificially say, I'm going through hard times too. But you know what? We love them. We love those people. Never met them, don't know them. Doesn't matter. We love them. And we want them to know this church loves them. Amen. So let's pray together. And um, I, I, I appreciate this so much. And this is just, it's just so right. And it's so good. And God's going to get so much glory and honor out of this. And uh, let, let's pray tonight, and then I'm asking you just find one of these piles, place your hand on it, spend just a moment, and then and if you want to move to a different pile, you can, or you can go ahead and be dismissed, let somebody else pray on it, and we're going to give these to these people to let them know God loves them and Center First loves them. Amen. Let's pray tonight. Father, you have been so good to us. You have been so good to us. I'll be the first to say, God, I'm blessed. I am, I am so blessed to be a pastor of this church. I am, I, I will declare it as loud as I can. I am blessed to be the pastor of this great church. And God, I'm just saying, Lord, all that you've done for us and all that you're going to do, Lord, we want to be a blessing to this community. We want to love on these people that are going through a hard time. That tonight, they're trying to figure out what tomorrow's going to bring. And 
they're trying to figure out what, what's going to happen and we want them to know sinner first loves them we want them to know that we're going to stand with them and we're going to be there for them and so God as we anoint these handkerchiefs tonight these prayer cloths and God we just speak faith over these cloths and we just ask that as, as the gift card goes yes but as this prayer cloth goes we just ask God that, that as they receive this cloth that it would be a reminder to them that God you love them and that you're going to see them through and though the hour may be dark and though the time may be challenging and the questions may have more than the answers God let this prayer cloth from this great church be a reminder to our community that God you're with us God you'll see them through so we speak God that you'll comfort them that you'll be with them that you'll give them a peace that passes all understanding Lord we speak over the leadership of Port Cool and we pray over the leadership God we understand the heaviness that they carry we understand the decisions that have to be made so God as a church we come together and we speak over this this business within our community and we pray for courage and faith and we pray for the leaders the CEO and everyone who's involved God we pray for their families and we ask that you would be with them in the mighty name of Jesus and as we do God we know that you're going to bless us because God we can never outgive you we can never outgive you and I thank you God for this church this is the greatest giving church I have ever met and the blessings prove it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We're going we're gonna to play something softly, and I'm asking you now, would you make your way? Listen, you can grab the oil if you'd like, and, and, and right next to it, put some on your finger, and you can anoint these prayer cloths. Would you do that now? Just as you want, would you just come up, lay your hand on it, and just say in the name of Jesus, and just say a prayer, whatever you want to pray. That's right, just open that oil up. Amen. We, we only have so many bottles, that's all right, but if you'll grab those bottles, you can pass them down. And just begin to, whatever you want to say over it, however you want to pray, would you just pray? Pray for the leaders. Pray for the families that are affected. Speak a word of faith over it. Oh, this is beautiful. Center first, this is beautiful. This is, this is where God's heart is. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, in your mighty name, Jesus. In your name, Jesus, God, give them peace. God, give them favor. In the name of Jesus, we send faith and we send prayer right now to everybody affected by this. And we declare, God, that we're going to lift them up in the name of Jesus. That we are ambassadors of Christ. That we are ambassadors. And as ambassadors, we're going to pray like never before. And we're going to give like never before. And we're going to let this community know that we love them and that God has them in his hand. So as we anoint these cloths, we speak it in the name of Jesus. And we declare, God, as they receive the prayer cloth, that, God, they would be reminded of your goodness. And they would be reminded of your power. That, God, you're going to comfort and you're going to speak and you're going to give them favor. And we speak it, God, in your name that you would give this industry favor. That you would give these families favor, God, in jobs and favor, God, with those who can open doors. We speak that in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to just keep playing for a moment. If you want to if you want to anoint and pray, you can. If you need prayer, let us know. We'll pray for you in closing. And we're going to ask again on Sunday morning for an offering again to bless our community. Amen. I love you. I thank God for you. I thank God for you. Watch what God does in this as we step up and we love those people around us. God bless you. You are dismissed.